<laughs> You're listening to the Winnebus.net Podcast Network. help because we all have complicated lives and lots of stuff to do but we are back to talk about twin peaks episode 9 10 and 11 so apologies for any frustration for you guys are like just get to episode 11 already <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do as we always do going straight through these things one at a time by reading out the wikipedia synopsis of each episode um some of which i all added a little bit too just because i was like hey you know that was pertinent enough i need to <laughs> yeah. um and uh before we start i'm chris i'm ian i'm betty and i'm scott and here we go with episode nine uh uh-uh. uh. Cooper's doppelganger meets Hutch, Tim Roth, and Chantal, Jennifer Jason Lee, at a farm. He sends a text to Diane and calls Duncan Cod, T- Duncan Todd, <laughs> Pat- Patrick Fischler, to ask if he has <laughs> done it yet. He orders Warden Murphy's death, mentions a job in Las Vegas, and drives away. Dougie's boss claims Dougie sometimes has episodes due to an old car accident. The Las Vegas police discover no record of Dougie Jones before 1997 and take fingerprints and DNA from his coffee mug. They arrest Ike the Spike, who has just left a phone message for JT. Bobby visits his mother with Sheriff Truman and Hawk to ask about Cooper. She tells them her husband long ago foretold their arrival and gives them a small metal cylinder containing instructions about a location, date, and Cooper's name written twice. The FBI stops in Buckhorn to examine the body with Major Briggs' fingerprints. Tammy questions Hastings, who says he and Ruth visited Briggs in another dimension where he had been hibernating for years and witnessed his beheading as he was saying Cooper's name. Hastings' secretary has been killed in a car explosion and his lawyer arrested for the murder of his wife. Meanwhile, Johnny Horn gets into an accident and Jerry Horn hallucinates his foot is talking to him. (laughs) At the roadhouse, a junkie called Ella scratches a serious rash. All right, so um, <laughs> this was an, had a lot of odd stuff and some new characters introduced here. Some returns of some characters we weren't sure we were ever going to see again. Um, you know, Mister C talking to Hutch and Chant- Chantal. Glad to glad to see that uh, Roth and Jennifer Jason Lee in there for sure, who are both slavishly like into Mister C. Oh yeah, like where he's like, hey, you want to fuck my wife? This is all, I feel like this is all part of this like redneck cult of personalities like building around himself of like this army of like white trash gangsters that he has like all in place all around the country. Yeah, uh, it, I mean we've certainly seen some degree of that in the fact that you don't want to fuck up because mm. he ha- doesn't really have a, a great firing program. There's no benefits or gold watch; just you get killed. Yeah. <laughs> um, as well, he you know he says Warden Murphy yanked in federal prison. Kill him at home, at work, or on the way. I love how so, like, you know what, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just make sure he's dead. Yeah. Typical Mr. C. But he also promises him that other assignment, the double header in Vegas, which you can't help but think of the double Briggs, uh, Major Briggs and Ruth, you know, yeah. killing from earlier. But the double header in Vegas, we presume one of which would be Dougie. Yeah. Or, neat. or as I'm calling him now, Duper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I'm not entirely sure who the probably Spike would be the other one. Yeah, either either Ike the Spike or maybe um, uh, the uh, the dude from Mulholland Drive. Um, red? Uh, not not Red. Uh, the uh, cas- uh, oh, the oh. casino guy. Oh, I'm blanking, oh. I am blanking on his name the, right now. The, the bro- of one of the brothers? No, 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 not the brother. The <laughs> the other guy. Fr- um, the, the, the pit boss. The pit, the, the pit boss. Fr- um, no, oh. the, the, dude, the, the dude from gets, the diner from Mulholland Drive, who's in the office yeah. in the casino, yeah, 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 yeah. who Mister C get, gets in contact right, with, right, right, right. So it's Mr. possible Winky. who he's already, yeah. yeah, who's already said he's disappointed with, yeah. So it might be a okay. I'm giving him one last chance. If once I find oh, out that they've yeah. that he's already got Ike the Spike, this is my contingency plan. You guys go to Vegas, take that guy out, and finally kill this fucker and get this over with, right? 
Uh, we also had the interesting question in this episode that we've gotten more details on since with Mr. C sending Diane and maybe not just Diane, but, but Diane got it, a text saying around the dinner table, the conversation is lively. Uh, obviously we saw more that that was not just a, like it wasn't, she was baffled by it cause we couldn't tell from the reaction. Here, yeah. But there's definitely some sort of thing between the two of them, which is odd considering her reaction to seeing him in the jail cell seemed so well, and she really re- shocked. And yeah. you find out in 10, she replied to him because he intercepted mm-hmm. that text and she gave him coordinates and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Did so she she's... Blackmailed? Or... But that, how would right. she even have had that information? Well, and... that's that's the yeah, thing. Is I... Well, yeah, is, is I don't think it's like, at least I hope that it's not the, a, a case of like Dan being evil or being some sort of double agent. But I think it might be something where... Maybe Mr. C has something on her. He's blackmailing her somehow, you know, mm-hmm. and she's sort of being forced into that position of having to give up these coordinates or, or, and all that. I stand by my long theory that Mr. C at this point is actually becoming Cooper again. That's kind of the signal that he's mm-hmm. like he's coming back and he's not evil anymore. Completely outlandish and more than likely <laughs> bullshit, but I still stand by it. I heard some people theorizing that uh, D- Mr. C is becoming more that way and Dougie is becoming more a certain way. And they're being pulled towards each other and because it's not that one's going to go away. They, they're not complete without the other. Each one yeah. is half exactly. of, of Cooper. Yeah. And they need to be merged, which yeah. uh, which seems like the most convincing theory I've heard so far. But I mean, it, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many things about <laughs> twins and duplicates here Absolutely. in this show. Yeah. Diane is a double agent. She's making it seem like, Mr. C, I'm on your side. Get the information so she can somehow help the Cooper that she yeah wears. maybe Cole has mm-hmm. something going on with her there yeah. you know like that that just yeah. Tammy and 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 uh, Albert don't even know about it's it possible. would be like Cole to keep things from them yeah, yeah. um and or the one thing I I also heard someone suggest is that what if when she was visited by Evil Cooper way back in the day she was replaced. And she's a doppelganger. Yeah. Because she definitely mm. doesn't seem like the same sort of person that you would assume she was back yeah. when. Yeah. She's dark. There's so, she's definitely bitter, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I know that's a stretch, but still, maybe she was affected? I, I, I don't, don't know. know. Also, that, with the yeah. Dougie's prints on the coffee cup about being run, how long does it take to run a set of fucking fingerprints? <laughs> <laughs> it is South Dakota. Yeah. But, you know, you think you'd send them to the FBI. It's like, done. Okay. Well, and that, I think that's what's going to happen is they do that, and then that's going <laughs> to cause, you know, Cooper's fingerprints what? to show up on, you know, Gold, uh, on uh, Gordon Cole's radar. Yeah. And that's the thing. It kind of seems like at this point that we've got a lot of our characters converging in South Dakota right now, and they're kind of wrapping up all the South Dakota stuff yeah. after this episode. Well, they're heading towards the same place. And, that, and that, yeah, there might be, like, a quick stop in Las Vegas before everybody all heads towards Twin Peaks for the end of all this. There is yeah. kind of, like, a weird thing about time, though, because yeah. with the cylinder that they get, it's like, you know, oh, this certain date that's in mm-hmm. a couple of oh, days. Yeah. But that's clearly, like, a week or so earlier. So yeah. like, do they just tell time? So I don't think everything's happening at the same time. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk there's a nine-day difference yes. between South Dakota and, and, and everything else that yeah, we're saying. Time, yeah. but, it's un, but it's still unclear, yeah. for sure. There was something about, like, a weather report, I think, in episode 10 on the, on the, on the TV where mm. people were like, oh, there was some information in there that seems to lead that there's nine days. And I was like, really? Because I don't understand your math, but that's yeah. okay. Everyone's <laughs> great at the maths. Uh, as the British would say. <laughs> uh, also, Dougie sitting there staring at uh, the flag with the song, with playing the Patriot Act, which is clearly That's you know a little bit of yeah. Cooper going through. Like he used to work for the government. You know, yeah. You know, I don't know if he'd be as much a patriot these days. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, once again, the red shoes, as they like you know, there's a big yeah. color red and red, red shoes, shoes specifically, which is you know a it's Lynch like, thing. Well, period. Well, not that. Yeah. Also, they're the same shoes that Audrey wore in the mm-hmm. first episode, yep. the first mm-hmm. season. So, and well, then him. Switching his view to the wall socket makes more sense because that's where he came out. That's yeah. a, you know. and and part of me, part of me, still holding out that like uh, you know Cooper getting back to normal. This is all part of some weird Wizard of Oz thing where because yeah. when he went through the wall yeah. socket the first time, he left his shoes behind, yeah. and then maybe like somehow him getting his shoes back is what's gonna you know Could snap be. him out of it. You yeah. know, so him looking at the shoes and then looking at the wall socket. There's yeah. something going on there, maybe, and other than it being Audrey. Shoes. And you go back to uh, the original series with, Han- with uh, not Hank, uh, uh, Leo, oh, new, yeah. new shoes over and over again. Mm, you know yeah. what the hell's that about? Hilarious. Maybe it's these new, new shoes. shoes. <laughs> Didn't he hide something in his old work boots or mm-hmm. his new? No, he bought new work boots and cut something and hid something in it. 
I think it was like codes or something like that. Yeah, I, I so know. shoes were really important for Leo. Yeah, <laughs> Boy, and and Dougie's kind of the same, kind of like spaced out, like, I'm Dougie. Or kind of like Leo was yeah. kind of spaced out. Yeah, Leo. there's Leo, a lot of Leo was so shot, and, you know. And now we have Candy acting all spaced out as yeah. well, which is like, I yeah. wonder if there's any connection to her, like if she yeah. was at one point in the Black Lodge. Someone suggested that what if she is, like, Possibly. what if she is, um, what's her name, uh, Annie. Oh, that would be <laughs> that would be something, yeah. Uh, huh. One, I think for my my count for the funniest moment of this episode is De- Detective Mackley talking to Cole and Albert and everybody. It says the principal's having an affair with the librarian. The librarian showing up dead with Major <laughs> Briggs's headless body. The principal's wife turning up dead and killed by her lawyer. The principal's secretary also dead a car explosion. Albert saying, mm. "What happens in season two? <laughs> <laughs> Just classic Albert. I apologize for Albert in advance. He's one of those friends who can't take anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Snarky, I, yeah. I, I, like, am so, like, really struck right now with seeing Albert being such a great character in this yeah. season. Yeah. And I actually it's just watched the movie The Night Flyer a couple days ago, the old Stephen King movie from the oh, 90s, yeah, yeah. which is campy but fun, but he plays the main character yeah. who's this total, like, hard-boiled journalist for, like, a weekly world news type yeah. rag, but in a world where that shit really does happen. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, Miguel Ferrer, he was great. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. lost a great one. Also, Albert and Constance flirting. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, um, you have to admit, the people online, they go, oh, they're going to hit it off. And I'm like, oh, yeah. it's reaching. And they, I said, oh, yeah, <laughs> Good actually went out on a date. And yeah. Magnet. Yeah, I was Cole like, and Tammy are all like, oh, squee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love how excited Albert looks like in that, in that shot where he's talking to Constance, he looks so happy, yeah. you know, and that's so unlike Albert. Found it. So it was, there was an interesting moment between, uh, uh, Diane and, uh, Cole when they were sharing a cigarette on the steps outside the police mm-hmm. station. He says, we used to smoke together way back when, remember? And she says, yeah, we sure did, Gordon. And that's not what's interesting. What's interesting is this whole scene, Tammy looked so uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. She's, like, really awkward. awkward and fidgety. And then a little later, yeah. we start to see why, where she's the one who's like, something's wrong with Diane. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't trust her. And she's the one who's like, yeah, something, something's up here. So that made more sense yeah. after the fact. She's also sure. not a great actress. Let's, let's, be, let's be fair about that, too. Yeah, so far, I haven't seen her do anything that really smacked me but you know like I said Lynch is so exacting with what he mm-hmm. wants to people do yeah. people to do on screen I can't imagine that you know she's so drastically fidgety and uncomfortable yeah. it looked very intentional uh, Matthew Lillard who yeah our, we got our last three episodes presumably <laughs> unless we get some Black Lodge Lillard in there somewhere oh, yeah. uh, acting his ass off mm-hmm. here in this episode here that and in me. episode 11 uh, those, those, these others came in, he said, and they grabbed me by the neck and they pushed, they pushed me down and said, what's your wife name, wife's name? What's your wife's name? Uh, Briggs telling, doing the Cooper, Cooper, you know, once again, the two co- saying Cooper twice, yeah. just like in the message yeah. that we see a little bit later in this episode. Um, you know, he says, uh, Tammy asking, did the major kill Ruth? And Bill saying there were so many people there. I loved her. We were going to go to the Bahamas. We were going to scuba dive and drink mixed drinks on the beach. And we were going to soak up the sun and look at beautiful sunsets. <laughs> R.I.P. Bill. <Yeah. laughs> well, and that's, and that's a thing. Like that, that whole scene is like such an interesting kind of data dump of like all of this crazy stuff about, you yeah. know, what I'm assuming, yeah, yeah where, where Major Briggs has been that, you know, yeah. basically confirmed that, yeah, like, Black, the Black Lodge inhabitants, probably the woodsmen were the ones responsible for um, for the death of uh, Ruth Davenport. And yeah. and maybe, you know, by the simple act of, like, Hastings, you know, finding Major Briggs, you know, in hibernation, that alerted the woodsmen to find Major Briggs, and that's how right. they ki- they killed him, and that's... Maybe what kind of set all this off, like with the... Um, there seems to be some sort of talk, a lot of talk I've seen in a lot of different places suggesting the woodsmen aren't evil, mm-hmm. they're just barrier guardians. Mm. They're just kind of like, no, this is not supposed to, the, never the twain shall meet yeah. people. Yeah. You know, like these things, you're, you're getting in too close. That, that would make sense yeah. considering where they kind of, where they popped up thus far. It's like any time, at least present day, not counting the stuff in the 50s. But Present day, when it, <laughs> whenever they whenever they show up, it they is were like young and crazy. Then. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is whenever people are kind of starting to kind of sniff around their neck of the woods, as it were. 
you know, that's when one of them will show up to kind of try and ward somebody but away. But if that was true, and this is jumping to episode 11, mm-hmm. I would have think they would have ripped Cole's head off and not poor Bill Hastings. That's true. That's so. true. Although Hastings was the one who was spilling the beans, so maybe they were thinking, you know... It's true. Yeah, they definitely... You know, kill him before he tells him anything else, or I, I don't know. By the way, just on that point, which is skipping ahead, and I have no idea if this is intentional or not, but when it was pointed out to me, I laughed out loud. Because Hastings dies, top of his head blown yeah. off. David Lynch looks down at him and oh, says, in the so most crazy. deadpan voice <laughs> imaginable, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> and someone pointed out, dead plus brain pan equals deadpan. And it was yeah. Like, yeah. Isn't that yeah. Fun? I'm like, he, I doubt it, but he, that's funny. He to talks think about. like an almost in a parrot type of voice. Looks he, like he's dead. Yeah. yeah. He's like, dead. You know, it's, it's just so... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, and jumping to eleven again because we're talking about them now. <laughs> Mackley's re- exp- response to that was still the, I laughed out loud. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! god. It's the most oh. re- the most realistic reaction I've ever seen in anything ever. I'm like, I, I thought it was pretty amazing I too. Love that. Well, and also the uh, like the the wound on his head looks mm-hmm. a lot like the the, ob- the autopsy photos of yeah. the people in New York mm, while well, yeah. they're back exactly. in episode three, like Just. the same way their heads kind of caved in. Yeah. So this so. energy gets this. Energy gets too close. Yeah. And you're not sure if it's how it's happening, but the electrical energy or the surge or the black smoke or the black fire or something. Yeah. Yeah, there's something there going on. <laughs> zombies coming. I don't know. <laughs> At this really point, I'm well, like, oh, no, <laughs> don't go there. Going back to know. episode nine, uh, we get to see Bobby having a, a rare moment of insight uh, that nobody else has. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Major Briggs, oh, yeah, he taught me how to open these things. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> As they get the metal cylinder we discussed about in the synopsis here where, where like, the, the uh, his mother's like, yes, I was given yeah. this and wait till the day you show up. And he's got to, like, throw it on the ground twice and get the what resonant the sound to open it. Thing? I'm so, wow. I was, I, I was like, okay. But, you know, yeah. I mean, obviously we all all but forgot about it once they actually open it. We're like, oh, new pertinent information. Yeah. It is really weird if you look at Bobby Briggs' life. Before it was just, oh, he's a malcontent, wayward, coke dealing, you know, shoots a cop by accident, woods kind of football player kid. Mm-hmm. And then his dad is... Typical. Yeah, typical in some American way. But his dad is like time traveling and shows him how to open these silver discs. And it's like, whoa, he's become far more <laughs> intriguing. And yet he didn't really talk about it with any of his classmates, by the way. Well, he's like, and, and now he's like, you know, as they pointed out, you're, he's becoming what his dad wanted him to be. You know, yeah. not only has he become an officer of the law, but, you know, like working with the, the authorities, but yeah. he is involved as part of the Bookhouse Boys, yeah. clearly, and being, you know, I look forward to seeing if we gather more Bookhouse Boys. You yeah. Know, make some old appearances or yeah. whatever. Yeah, and he definitely just, like, in general, just seems like more of a stand up guy now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Than he was yeah. He's actually kind of, like, back in, in a way, I think he's become, like, the hero of the show because yeah. he's, like, a good guy. And, yeah. Yeah. again, not jumping to the episode 11, but, but he's become, like, this. Guy. He's become something really good. Like yeah. With the, yeah. that, talking about his father, the look in his eye. It was a, he, like, acted his ass off. Here's a guy yeah. who was, you know, chastised for being such a ham bone in the original <laughs> series. Like, oh, my God. Now he's, like, really just taking it yeah. very seriously. And it's really, I thought it was quite moving. And then, yeah. you know, yeah. he awkwardly has to watch oh, Shelley no. doing exactly Ugh. the wrong thing again. all over again yeah. later. With, but, with someone who's basically him. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the note that was inside said cylinder, of course, had the two Twin Peaks symbols yeah. uh, that we also saw in the Owl Cave, and then the the green ring, or maybe, or maybe it is in fact just a a, a pair of Twin Peaks. Um, it has the crescent moon upended over that symbol that we saw on the playing card that yeah. Eagle Coop had, mm-hmm. which comes up again in episode eleven when yeah. we see Hawk's map when Hawk. Uh, cryptically says, "Oh, you don't want to know about that." <laughs> yeah. or maybe the experiment, but yeah. maybe not. Yeah, yeah. so you, you, you definitely don't want to know anything about that. Like, wow. great, okay. No, uh, but you know, <laughs> we get the story of Jack Rabbit's house, which yeah. when that Jack Rabbit Slims, the name of the in, the bar in Pulp Fiction, in, in, yeah. In Pulp Fiction, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I kept thinking of that. I was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. But yeah, mm-hmm. Jack Rabbit's house, the imaginary world that that Major Briggs would like, like he and my Bobby would, when Bobby was a kid would go like go to to tell stories, what have you. And once again, like I said, the Cooper Cooper in between a bunch of numbers that no one seems to be putting together with anything else. And then, I've seen. and then the the two five three. Yes, you know, which, which, which is, is the time yeah. they're supposed to be there exactly, wow. and that was also the time that uh, way back in episode <laughs> three. episode three when uh, when Dougie went in the lodge and Evil Cooper started vomiting up all the cream <gasps> corn. It was at two fifty three. Yeah, yeah, that was the the clock on his on the, the dashboard on his, on his nice car. Catch. 
was that 253. And that was the time that he was telling them in the episode before, that's when I have to be alone because that's when I'm supposed to go back in. Uh, so... Nice. Um. Yeah. So obviously, this is <laughs> this is all. This information is is quickly coming to a head. Maybe yeah. even in the next episode. You know, it's hard to say at this point. Yeah. One or two episodes. I suspect they're going to be at the place at the time. Yeah. Or will they? Or, or will, will they? they? Um. Oh, no. Going to J- poor Jerry Horn, who's still just lost in the woods, tripping <laughs> off. <laughs> Uh, not really. Is he on Sparkle? Know. They've recently said the drug of choice in Twin Peaks is I called Sparkle. He's the one that's yeah. manufacturing it. I, I think well, he might oh. be distributing it. Well, I don't know if he's if he's, well, he's distributing selling, it. He's, yeah, he's selling weed. He's selling he's weed. Though, yeah, expensive. Yeah. but I th- I think he might have sprinkling he, Sparkle on the weed. Yeah, I think he might he might have taken. It's like tie stick, like chocolate tie <laughs> yeah. stick. Yeah, you just put sprinkle on it <laughs> instead. It's I think My Little might, Pony tie stick. Yeah, oh, I think he might he might he might have taken it because um, we're kind of seeing you know like we saw um, Richard Horn take it earlier. Yeah. And he kind of was acting sort of the same way. And I suspect um, later in this episode and in the next couple of episodes, we see some people around the town acting like really weird and kind of like just out of their mind. And I'm suspecting it has something to do with that drug. <coughs> you're kind of oh. getting the sense that this is going throughout the town. This drug they, is pretty big and pretty nasty. Yeah. And they mentioned earlier in the season, like they had a, a kid at the high school OD'd on it. So yeah. clearly it's starting to yeah. get around. That was the thing that when we, were, when we were first introduced to Bobby that Truman was asking him about. Maybe he didn't know what it was or where it was coming from. So I'm thinking it's all this same drug and it's just yeah. slowly inhabiting all the, everybody in the town. Sounds, now, do you think the whole, small, yeah. the whole, yeah. I am not your foot is just him tripping and it's just being weird. For Probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you get like the to drug, yeah. Whether if it's the legal pot or the sparkle, sparkle motion, it's <coughs> ripping a hole into to the dimensions where he's seen the portal. Cause it seems like he's wandering dangerously close to that grove. Mm-hmm. And so I've, didn't he say uh, to the foot, I've been here before? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Another, it was another episode. He's like, foot. you're saying the same thing. Yeah. He's, it's the same team last time, which means he's kind of in a loop or yeah, something. Yeah. He's, he's getting really close to that. Also, Jack Rabbit, energy. Rabbit Foot. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You know the jokes that are hokey though. It's not beyond David Lynch. It's like a fifties well, old dad joke. That's yes. really into yeah. this. Because so where is it's he? Possible. That's yeah, he, he could very well. He could very well be where that is. Yeah, that's yeah. I don't know. I mean, he might be. I'd love that if that's that's the big reveal. Is they find the place as Jerry Horn out in the woods for four days. I'm like, thank God you found me. <laughs> is this my foot? <laughs> we, we, have a, we have an argument. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, 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 meanwhile, we see Ben and Ben Benjamin Horn and Beverly Ashley Judd's character still yes. almost getting it on. Yeah, you know they're, yeah. they're continuing this weird flirtation where he's like, "No, no." At first, I was like, because before we were like, "Oh, well, he's married and she's married, so he's mm-hmm. being a good guy." But since we've seen, he's definitely not married anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. at least not to his wife from before. Yeah. Um, but she is. So he's mm-hmm. like, oh, "I'm just not doing it because you, your yeah. husband." And I'm like, "All right." And the whole thing with the husband being that. In that bad shape, I mean, yeah. I feel like something's going to happen to that guy before yeah. long. Because otherwise, why even go. bother with this whole flirtation unless so- it's going to go somewhere? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, which you know. Speaking of that, Johnny Horn running through the house. Just that oh, single thing where I was God. like, I had to look it up. I was like, who the fuck was that? Yeah. You see a guy Johnny. run yeah. at the wall and knock himself out, and you're like, <laughs> okay, to It was such a weird showing the house. It was almost like when they show the fan at Laura's house. Mm-hmm. It was just this weird, ominous. Kind of Kubrick type of shot, and then dun 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 Johnny, and the mom just sounded crazy drunk. I mean, I don't think she was, but she sounded like whatever in the baby Jane kind of voice. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh man. So. <laughs> well, and also it it kind of stru- it struck me. I don't know if this is supposed to be anything intentional, but um, it, it, in a weird way, like it kind of reminded me of the end of season two because Johnny's wearing like very Cooper esque blue pajamas. And is running headfirst into a, oh, into a wall, true. you know. I didn't even think about that. And, and that was something the first time I saw it that kind of <laughs> stuck out to me because sure. because of the, the 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 I think he had the same color of blue that he was wearing. Oh, and so again, I don't know if that's supposed to mean anything or if it's just a fun little callback. Somebody needs you know? to make a craft brewer and needs to make a beer called Annie's Beer. <laughs> Crazy Dale Cooper. On the <laughs> Maybe Johnny is a uh, like they said that he got pushed down the stairs by Audrey, and when he had that brain injury. Maybe he, you know how you're right on the kind of a, a cusp of a coma. Mm-hmm. You've got one foot in, in Earth and the other in the afterworld. Maybe he can see and pick up the events that are occurring. That's why yeah. he's getting kind of agitated and starting to, like, move around and bump his head. Like, when he hit the wall, the the 
the waterfall fell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It felt like it was. It, it really yeah, focused on that it just picture. Wasn't a random picture. All right, so one of the this <laughs> is the first <laughs> thing episode in this that had outside media tie into it, <laughs> which was, was William Hastings yeah. having had a long time <laughs> running since 1997, <laughs> consp- like a uh, quantum oh physics God. conspiracy website called the Search for the Zone. You can look it up at the Search for the Zone oh, dot com. Like and there's, really? I mean, this is like a GeoCity site. It's like old school, and, like <laughs> lots of flashy like stuff, and oh, and man. um. <laughs> it's got it's the last updated November 2015, <laughs> uh, and there's notes there about like you know multiple universes and and about uh, stuff from Robert Heinlein for some reason. A lot of the links <laughs> here just take you to official Trin Twin Peaksy stuff. Yeah, you know, where it's like oh here's a a weird video that you have no idea what you you can't even tell what's happening. In. But but in a weird way, this does kind of go back to a lot of the, like the the government conspiracy stuff that's in the yeah. the secret history of, oh, yeah. of Twin Peaks. Um, granted, in that a lot more of that has to do with with UFOs, but there's a little bit of it in that book that kind of touches on like you know time travel and mm-hmm. alternate dimensions mm-hmm. and all that. Well, I mean, stuff that has been discussed a lot recently is like there's stuff about electricity from Nikolai Tesla here. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. there's uh, still a lot of stuff about parallel universes. Obviously, we're dealing with a lot of dualities yeah. on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, like I, it's it's interesting to read through, but there's nothing I thought I thought was terribly essential. You know, and there's a link at the very bottom. If you click on one of the trees, it'll take you to a place you can pre-order the soundtrack. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you didn't either. Um, we also got given in this episode the coordinates, which people yeah. were like, wait, where are the coordinates? Yeah. They are in actually in South Dakota and what they call the, the Black Hills mm-hmm. of yeah, South Dakota. I'm actually um, going on a road trip in two weeks no and way. part of my path is going through South Dakota through the Black Hills. Sweet. Well, there was actually a whole go photo essay awesome. someone put up where they found the exact spot and there was yeah. nothing there. It yeah. was just he like... Said, oh, he said yeah. something about a, span, a can... Yeah, he found a buried can. With the cement in a bullet hole, like a bullet hole. Yeah, but they were still like, okay, but that could be nothing. That could yeah, just be I think garbage it's that's just, out there. You know, you know, Black Hill, South Dakota has a really interesting uh, energy. Somebody on Twitter asked Mark Frost if it would be safe to visit it, and he said, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go there. <laughs> Good shot. Yeah, that's, that's I'll crazy. let you know, and I'll the, be right back. The question being, <laughs> did someone go there before this guy and grab whatever was there and just hasn't said anything? Hmm. You know? Yeah. I don't know. It's possible. I, I think back to in the, Cl- uh, not Cloverfield, in the uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane mm. trailer, deeply hidden inside that thing. Like, I watch it and I can't even find it, were coordinates. What? Somebody found that, went to the coordinates, and buried in the ground was a whole, like, Cloverfield fan gift set yeah. with a bunch of, like, gimme stuff in it. Oh, <laughs> that's very cool. Yeah, that very is- cool. That's cool marketing. But I don't know if that's what the deal was here. Mm. So, like, uh, you know, well, well, the Sarah, time will tell. Well, you some treat there for the next Twin Peak fan to find. Like, a letter in a bottle. Pass it on. And then we saw another musician here at the end at the Roadhouse, but who wasn't playing. She was just a well-known musician playing the character of Ella, Ella a junkie with a very bad armpit oh, yeah. rash, oh, apparently. Probably Sparkle. That's a yeah. Sky yeah. Ferreira. Sparkle, just... uh, another famous musician who I've never heard of. <laughs> she definitely look does not look like in yeah. this show. She just looks horrible. I yeah. didn't recognize her. I was like, rough. "That's her." And she and her Go friend having that girl. weird code that that zebra's out again, and the penguin. It's yeah. like, what the fuck does that mean? I, I, characters we've never seen. Yeah, before, I, I, I think this is again like you know, like we've seen a couple times in this season, some sort of like low key drug deal going on yeah. in the middle of the roadhouse. Yeah. So the roadhouse has got some sleazy. That's how they. That's how they pay for nine inch nails. They gotta, you know. <laughs> they need to put run all those drugs in that yeah. thing, and yeah. he'd clean that. Shit up. <laughs> that's how this oh, whole show's gonna end: <laughs> is uh, Good Cooper ripping the throat out of Evil Cooper, and then yeah. karate, karate <laughs> kicking him into a lake. Yeah, but then Ghost Patrick Swayze shows up and fixes everything. <laughs> yeah. This will be the best season of TV ever. You know, and then at the very <clears throat> end, everyone jumps and goes. It yeah. freeze frame. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, Bobby's walking across the foot the football field and puts his foot back in the air and freeze frames. <laughs> it's the sunset in the background. Yeah, exactly. That would be beautiful. All right, so we go to episode 10, the Wikipedia synopsis as thus. Carl Rod, by the way, love Carl so much. Yeah, he's the superhero he's awesome. of Twin Peaks, I think. Carl Rod listens to Stephen, Caleb Landry Jones, berate and beat his mm-hmm. wife, Becky, Amanda Seafried, and says, It's a fucking nightmare. <sighs> 
Richard Horn confronts Miriam, who tells him she has written to Sheriff Truman about the hidden run. He attacks her, turns on the gas, and lights a candle in her trailer, then has Deputy Chad... Ooh, fuck ooh, you, Deputy Chad. Chad in- intercept the letter. Chad is such an asshole. Not only is he doing that, but he's fucking with, uh, what's her... Lucy. Just yeah. to fuck with her. Yeah. Like, you're like, man, you're such a prick. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Mitchums, the, the gangsters, see a yeah. news story about Ike's arrest and recognize Cooper as Mr. Jackpots. After noticing Cooper's physique, Janie E. Oh, has gosh. crazy sex with <laughs> uh, Nadine Hurley watches Dr. Jacoby's latest broadcast from her drapery store. I love she finally oh. gets the drapery yeah. store. Run <laughs> silent, run drapes. Run That's silent. the best yeah, store yeah. name ever. Like, that was amazing. He's a true uh, artist. Richard attacks his grandmother Sylvia in her home and robs her. She calls Ben and demands money from him, uh, Sylvia being Ben's ex-wife. Duncan Todd orders Anthony Sinclair to frame Dougie for the denial of an arson insurance claim that lost the Mitchums $30 million. Gordon has a vision of Laura, and it turns out to be Albert. <laughs> <laughs> Albert informs him that the FBI has intercepted a text message from Diane informing someone of Hastings' arrest. Tammy then shows them a photo that places Cooper's doppelganger at the location of the New York murders, which was, whoa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hawk receives another call from the log lady who tells him Laura is the one. And then, and probably the most, wow, what does this really mean? Sequence of musical sequence we've seen so far ending an episode. Rebecca Del Rio, yes. who fans of Mulholland <laughs> Drive will remember is the Silencio yeah. sequence singer, uh, sings of no stars at the end. Song written by David Lynch. Also interesting because she's singing in front of red curtains and her dress is the pattern of the yeah. floor yeah. and the yeah. colors of the floor of the Black Lodge. I was like, this has got to mean something, right? I, and I feel I, maybe I'm making this up, but like I feel like there was some sort of reference or something a couple episodes ago to like there not being any stars or anything like that. Yeah, maybe I'm making that Darkness. up, but so the yeah, glow, the glow is it, Log Lady said something. The glow is dying. Mm, Electricity's yeah. fading. Yeah, yeah. I do think that Twin Peaks, as the Black Lodge is ready to reopen up, that whatever light is there or was there, it's dimming. In the darkness, as you can see, the town's getting really crazy. Now, this episode had an awful lot of violence against women. Yes, so it did. Yeah. We're very clear. You know, we're, we're like, okay, I mean, it was disturbing to watch. And I felt that way as well. In some ways, this was my least favorite episode to watch because it was so grim, unrelentingly. But I did read an interesting viewpoint that was saying... Laura's role in this might be that she will sort of be the light that possesses all these ladies in the town to be like, take no shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. <It's laughs> <guns. No. laughs> and that maybe there'll be like well. something happened to Amanda Seyfried to Becky where she's already yeah. starting to get a taste of like Laura in her life where she's yeah. like... Well, and, Mir- and we find that Miriam is not dead because Richard's apparently the worst killer ever. Yeah, he's not great at killing. Except That's little good. kids with his truck. He's great oh, at that. He's, he's really coward, good at that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then of course you know, with the, the ghost of Laura Palmer appearing, they're really sort of wanting you to, yeah. reminding you, Laura is going to be very pertinent. Yeah. Don't forget that, like, Laura's, it's not just yeah. something that happened in the first season. She is somehow the key to all of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is very confusing because we've gotten very little data on what exactly, how exactly that would work. All yeah. we can do is wild theories. <laughs> um, but uh, Albert uh, being told about Mr. C texting Diane and, and Mr. Uh, Cole telling him, you know, keep her close. Like, you know, keep an mm-hmm. eye on her, which is exactly what we see Albert doing. Much to uh, Di- Diane's chagrin. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, Gordon, Gordon Cole, Cole making that doodle, which I was like, did you oh. not pause it and go like, oh, what is it? And turn your head upside yeah. down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Which <laughs> people described as a reindeer creature with huge antlers and a hand attached to an elongated arm reaching into the picture from outside the border. Someone also pointed out that I didn't notice is next to his pad was a small red box that looked very similar to the one Mr. C called from prison. Hmm. Don't know if that's pertinent. Or yeah. yeah. Um, other people pointed out the reindeer looked like the world's angriest dog from the card, the comic yeah. strip that David mm. Lynch used to draw. Yeah. <laughs> Which seems more likely. Yeah, probably more Isn't likely. Isn't there a Mr. Reindeer in, in Wild at Heart? In Wild at Heart. And um, oh, as well, yeah, in, a hit man. in this same episode, we see reindeers on the Christmas decorations inside of mm. um, Miriam. Miriam's uh, trailer. Yeah. Reindeers Intriguing. seeming to be pertinent. Uh, that broken teddy bear with a light bulb head oh for Johnny Horn's house saying repeatedly, hello, Johnny, how are you today? That was almost as annoying as the horn honking yeah. in, in episode 11. It builds more intensity because you're like, this horrific violence is happening to Grandma Horn. 
and you you can't get this teddy but teddy bear won't stop talking you're like stop make it stop and just this intensity of feeling helpless you can't help her you can't help johnny you can't no. help anything it's just being forced to watch this horrible violence it was just almost absurd this is yeah. going on while this teddy bear with that who <laughs> With what? no head, <laughs> no head, and a light bulb that is apparently its voice track is broken. It sounds yeah. like torture. Yeah, it sounds like, like she's she, torturing Johnny yeah, almost. It, and then you wonder what kind of woman is Sylvia? Because <laughs> in she in in pilot, she's like she was saying to Audrey, just tell him that Laura's not coming. He's never coming again. How hard is that? And it's like that seems really kind of cruel. Like someone died. Yeah. Not like. You know, yeah. how is he going to understand if he's got, like, you know, a head wound or, yeah. A, yeah. or a mental mm-hmm. issue or... A, I, I don't know Johnny's real problem. Yeah, I remember it's that... It's hard enough to understand if you just... Uh, you all know, I remember is Audrey hard. felt responsible for him back yeah. in the day, mm-hmm. back in the original show. <coughs> like, I don't I don't know. Uh, I always yeah. felt the whole Johnny Horn story was very, like, not terribly well explored. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just by the way, and you're kind of like, wow, that's interesting. Um, the weird relationship that the Mitchum brothers have with their pink <laughs> girls, Candy, Mandy, and Sandy, especially Candy, who in this episode we see her more animated than she's ever been, r- trying to kill a fly with a remote control, uh, with, uh, unfortunately bashing the shit out of one of the, the brothers' heads <laughs> by doing it. Um, <laughs> very funny scene, but, uh, someone pointed out it was reminds of the fly in season two with Lucy when she's obsessed with the fly. And Andy is telling her that he's he's uh, sterile. The doctor says he's sterile, and she's just kind of like oblivious trying yeah. to kill a fly in the office. Right. I had totally forgotten about that. And why are Sandy Candy and Mandy so completely oblivious? Like, I mean, to the point where they're like, they they're either out of the Black Lodge, like we said yeah. earlier, or they're just on heavy doses of drugs. On heavy doses of drugs. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think they're just kind of weird and. It's bizarre and it's very strange, but I think they're just they're his girls. They're mobsters. They're, they're like used little, to the this. malls. Yeah. They're malls. Oh, there is. Yeah. Boom, but but she's it. out of it to a point where you're like, what? I know get her people, some help. I know some people <laughs> well, sure. like this, and they're not on drugs. It. I do think it is uh, dissociative. Kind yeah. Of. Like if you want to go into the real psychology, if Candy was this, her backstory. She the actress said. That she was human trafficked and the brothers saved her. If that's true, and let's say she's not on drugs, she's dissociative and living this lifestyle with the Mitchum brothers is is a godsend. It's like heavenly where she's being treated much better. Yeah. Because when she smacks him with that remote, I was like, oh, that guy is going to go Frank. Them. But they, I was scared. But the, both the brothers to, have a weird paternal yeah. thing with the yeah. girls Just where they're, as much that, as they get frustrated by yeah. them, they're kind of like... Oh, you. Well, there's that yeah. whole line that Jim Belushi has where he's like, well, if we fire her, she has nowhere else to go. You know, yeah. We can't get rid of her. Of, like maybe playing on that weird um, stereotype that we that was put out in movies at one time, that Italian mobsters, they'll put out a hit, they'll kill you if you do them wrong, but they won't touch the women. They put yeah. them on pedestals. So maybe he's making a reference Well, they will to, on The Sopranos. <laughs> making a reference to however like this 50s dreamy concept of gangsters have their morals too like yeah, I mean, is it is odd class. how the Mitchum brothers who initially we looked at as like class C villains yeah. they actually made you kind of really like them over yeah. the space it's- of these last couple episodes <laughs> oh, where you're yeah. like oh they're kind of sweet in their way yeah. Jim Belushi especially like the moment yeah. he first showed up I was like alright here we go yeah. and, then, and then since then he's become like one of my favorite new characters oh yeah me too we met the season they've given know? him so many great moments especially yeah. in episode 11 but we'll oh, get to yeah, that yeah. Um, and I love the Mitchum brothers going, wow. So it turns out Mr. Jones is actually called Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Dougie, which is very funny. Um, and watching that whole thing, we're kind of like, I felt very nervous because I'm like, great. This is just what he needs more, yet more shit in his yeah. life. But of course, we had nothing to worry about as it turned out. Uh, Jerry Horn still running around Ghostwood Forest on drugs. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, and also, if Ben Benjamin Horn is married to uh, Sylvia still, uh, yeah. or is not married to her still, why does he still have his wedding ring? Maybe on? they're just separated and they're not actually, like, divorced. Yeah. You know, they're in the baby. process of being it's divorced. It's possible that, yeah, they just are very... And he also seems to indicate, he doesn't, I'm sorry to interrupt you, I apologize. Oh, no. He also seems to not like the fact that she's, you know, considerably younger. And he, that seems to give him pause. Mm-hmm. And I think he regrets maybe how he was years earlier when he was with, <laughs> with all the people. That, he's like, maybe I was a horrible person. Maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. Yeah. Well, not not, not too much. In season two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, he had weird breakdowns, so maybe. He yeah, and he tried to kind of 
redeem himself after that. I love that at the moment he gets off the phone with uh, with Sylvia, he's just like, hey, Beverly, you want to go to dinner? Yeah. <laughs> this is too much now. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this next thing I'm going to read out, this came from one of the analysis sites, and I can't remember, I, I forgot to write it down if it was Entertainment mm-hmm. Weekly, which does a great job breaking down the synopsis is the New York Times or Vox or AV Club, I'm not really sure. Actually, I found Entertainment Weekly, if you're looking for a metaphorical interpretation, does, believe it or not, the best job of any of these mm-hmm. sites. But they, that's uh, cool. but So that's why I'm thinking this is from that. But uh, talking about Johnny, while Sylvia is being attacked, says, as this scene played out, Johnny wanted so badly to help his mom. He was bound in a straitjacket and tethered to a chair. He toppled over and tried to break free, but he couldn't. A portrait of impotence. Combined with the decapitated teddy bear with the plastic cartoon-eyed replacement head, a debasement of a symbol for innocence transmogrified into some postmodern mo- monster toy, the whole thing struck me as a metaphor for pop culture's deconstruction and distrust of classical heroism. The music played to these meanings. It was an orchestral rendition of a 1926 pop song, Charmaine, composed for the film What Price Glory? Yet the most famous use of an orchestral version was the, of the tune was in Milos Forman's Oscar-winning adaptation of Ken Kesey's novel One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. In that movie, a mental institution is used as a metaphor for degrading conformist society and the main character, an outlaw, feigning mental illness and to escape a prison sentence becomes a metaphor for corrective counterculture rebellion. So some interesting, like, yeah. deep cut stuff sure. to possibly yeah. throw into the mix of the scene that definitely felt like there was a lot more going on than we were aware of on the or, surface. Or, this is a recurring nightmare that David Lynch has had. He's like, I'm going to put this shit on screen. That's fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's well, possible. Well, and I think, I think this scene pretty much confirms that that uh, uh, Audrey Horn is is Richard Horn's mom. It seems to be because um, no one mentioned. There's no one else. Yeah, and there's Donna because that's true. Yeah. But I feel like it I, does seem odd. Though. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if. Yeah, that would be weird. And, and I feel like it kind of goes back to that whole conversation with uh, Doc Hayward um, a couple episodes back, where you know maybe Evil Cooper is actually yeah. the the father of of Richard Horn that. It yeah. seems like this episode might be confirming that, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, at the very least, very that she's, the fa- that she's the mother. She's the mother, she's definitely. The mother. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, yeah. she's the father and the mother. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she still like raises the question, 11 episodes in, and still no Audrey Horn, who we very know very well is was cast in this and will appear yeah. in it. Well, like, what is he waiting for? I, I think for she's definitely, I don't think she's living in Twin Peaks. I think she, yeah. I mean, she might be in Vegas, but I don't know. She's definitely, it seems like from this episode... The fact that all this goes down the Horn family and no one thinks to call sure. Audrey. Maybe she's that's, still in the hospital. That's what I'm. It's true. Maybe she never yeah. came out of the coma. Is yeah. She, because it seems like she's such a she's a strong enough person. She would have something to say to him about this. Yeah. So I'm thinking she never fully recovered. She might be a lot like Johnny. Mm. But why isn't she sitting next to Johnny? So it must maybe she's still in the coma. Yeah. yeah. Or. Yeah. St- in an institution of some yeah, sort. Yeah, I kept thinking she's either still, she's damaged in that way, either in a coma or yeah. mentally damaged in like, you know, like an institution or something. Or you're right, she moved out of Twin Peaks. She's like, fuck yeah. this place. Yeah. <laughs> Which who could blame anyone? I yeah. mean, yeah. I left my hometown because it was fucked up, but it was nothing fucked up like that. <laughs> Your bank didn't explode. <laughs> uh, yeah, nobody was wrapped in plastic <laughs> down by the lake, you know? <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, one connection I, I I saw people was making Rodney and Bradley Mitchum's relationship, Ben and Jerry Horn's relationship, the two like you know corporate brothers, if you will, mm-hmm. and then Candy, Mandy, and Sandy being the way they're kind of being used by them, the way they're woman in a box uh, to the yeah. trapped woman of One Eyed Jacks, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll get some pretty dark stuff on the Mitchum brothers in the future to take away our our, our feelings of somewhat warmth towards yeah. them lately. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, and then, of course, we mentioned earlier Mr. C appearing in the photo from the glass box in New York City. He yeah. appears to be the mysterious billionaire who was funding the operation. And, and maybe this is part of you know one of his many contingency plans for yeah. if Cooper got out of the Black Lodge. You know, This is one of five or six different backup plans he had set yeah. up to was, make sure. Was it a trap to capture him or mm-hmm. to capture something else? I would think probably him since he, he, you know, he was the first thing that, that, that came out um, and then the mother or whatever came out after, you know, essentially yeah. chasing him. So I, I think yeah, this is all yeah. part of a way to, mm. to, to, you know, like he had a can he had the camera set up. So maybe, you know, okay, I see, you know, we see on the camera feed, Cooper shows up. Okay. I know that he's going to pop out in Las Vegas. So I'll have my guys ready in Las Vegas, yeah. you know, on standby basically. So if I hear from my people in New York that he showed up, yeah. then the people in mm. New York can take him out. And this is all yeah. part of a very complex, complicated plan to make sure, sure that he gets, yeah, so he gets killed. If the, 
mother slash experiment mm -hmm. who made it through that glass box, where the hell is she right now? Good, very and good who's question. Who's she touching? You yeah. know, because it's getting too close. Obviously, yeah. makes your head I mean, implode or yeah. Explode. I mean, was she? Did she manifest in the in the woodsman that we see in Maybe. episode eleven? Yeah, I don't know. Speaking of episode eleven, here's the Wikipedia synopsis. <laughs> A group of children discover Miriam crawling from the underbrush. Becky learns her husband Stephen has been cheating on her with Gersten Hayward, who what? played this role yeah. as a yeah. small girl yeah. in the original show, who actually they got her to come back. I was like, damn, that's authenticity. Yeah, um, true. Uh, although, yeah, we get Gersten, but no Donna. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what we were hoping for, right? What about the other the girl who writes poetry? I can't remember her name. No, that was Gersten. No, no, Gersten was, Gersten Gersten was the redhead who oh, played right. the piano. Played the piano. Kind of yeah. Come on, everybody, get happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, I thought... I I thought she was the niece because I was like, "Who is this precocious kid?" I thought she's kind of bratty. I, yeah. I don't know where I got that. She, from. she was also the uh, little girl in Dune. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah she was. <laughs> she's very young. No. Oh. Uh, so Becky drives to an apartment and shoots through the door, looking, uh, presumably Gersten's apartment, thinking that Stephen is there with her. But the couple are elsewhere. In fact, they are at the bottom of the stairs, looking up, going, "Fuck!" Yeah. Uh, <laughs> At the diner, Becky's parents, Shelly and Bobby, which is confirmed for us, uh, chastise her over the incident. Red arrives, that's Balthazar Getty's role, who is the guy who can make dimes disappear in the air and is selling sparkle yeah. everywhere. And yeah. Shelly leaves to kiss him. Shelly, once again, making terrible choices. <laughs> After a child fires a gun through the diner window, Bobby discovers an anxious woman with a sick girl in her car. That's putting it mildly. I would just say a flat-out zombie. <laughs> um, at, the yeah. at the location yes. where Hastings met Briggs, the FBI finds Ruth's body with coordinates on one arm. Gordon sees woodsmen in a portal and is drawn back by Albert. A woodsman kills Hastings. While Hawk, Hawk and Truman study an ancient map, Hawk receives a phone call from the log lady who tells him, there's fire where you're going. Dougie's boss gives Cooper a check for $30 million to give to the Mitchums. The Mitchums plan to kill Cooper, but after Bradley has a prophetic dream, they realize he is an ally and take him for drinks and cherry pie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so first off, Miriam's alive! Yeah. <laughs> so relieved so, to see woman, A woman didn't die. That's awesome. Yeah. Miriam's yeah, alive. Kids are traumatized for the rest of their lives. <laughs> yes, they are. Also, the, 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 those kids, that is like the worst game of catch I've seen in quite some time. Yeah, they're not great. <laughs> but, you know, it's so, like, whatever, the, the, it's a very Lynchian move where the way he's moving the camera yeah. real fast has this really bad you, you know when he does something like that you're like something is Something's about to happen, happen. Yeah. fucked up yeah. you know oh, like, one of those kids gonna hit by a car holy yeah, shit I, oh yeah when he, we were waiting yeah for, when he ran out in that no. street I was like nope nope again. don't do this again <laughs> nope. it's Richard again oh my god <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, he's away. It, yeah. I got a met I really laughed at the sheer melodrama of like uh uh, Shelly jumping on the, on the car, <laughs> holding on to it, and then and flying so off of it. You see her shoe fly in the air. It was insane. <laughs> I'm thinking, see that? Shelly's addicted to drama. She loves yeah. this. Yeah. Well, and that and that felt like very much yeah. a classic Twin Peaks move yeah, of like the most over the top sitcom thing that somebody could do of like <laughs> jump on the hood of the car, and yeah. just it's veer out in oncoming like traffic. Oh my god! Yeah, I was like, and then of course Shelly's just like, well, whatever. After. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, I have a feeling this happens all the time. Like this is just not because Norma's like had this look of not this again. Yeah. Like, she knows. Norma's she, just ready to sell that diner and get the <laughs> fuck out of yeah. town. She should. Well, and it's, and, and I, I didn't bring it up during the last episode, but apparently, uh, um, it, it's not, you can't really see it in the way that it's edited in the show, but apparently where the Drape Runner store is, is right yeah. across the street from the double R. Oh, okay. So <laughs> adding a little oh, bit more salt God. in that wound, especially if, if oh. maybe her and Big Ed aren't, aren't together anymore. Right. Which Ouch. we still don't know. Um, but he has a gas farm. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we also did see Gerson's apartment was in a building that looks an awful lot like the apartment building where Ruth's was. All those yellow walls. Yeah, and which of course yellow in Twin Peaks universe is the color of Garmin Bosia, which yeah. means pain and suffering. Yeah. So we're like, oh, is there? Is that? I mean, almost certainly has some sort of direct message of like of that there or in another parallel. Yeah. So yeah. is her husband Stephen seeing? Is that his mom or is that his lover or is it his? Sparkle, spark, a sparkle dealer. I can't say sparkle dealer. It's hard to say. It's, really, it's implied but, it's a lover. I mean, yeah, I assumed it was a lover. It, it felt like, but it's like maybe there's something. Maybe more there's like another it. level we don't even know yeah. about. Yeah. Maybe he's going there because she <clears> called him a coward, and I can't believe you did this. And it's like coward. Did he? Did he take all her drugs and <laughs> you know take them all without her? So that's what she's angry about. I didn't hear her say something like cheating. 
Yeah, she's it also... It felt like it was a drug thing. Like, how dare he take my drugs and take some? Yeah. No, I feel like she says it Maybe later both. on. When she's talking to Shelly and Bobby later on, she kind of implies that she's another one. He was cheating on her with oh, another okay. one. Yeah. It, seemed, okay. it seemed pretty clear to me. I mean, but I, I love Carl once again. My favorite, one of my favorite new characters on the show for sure, Harry Dean Stanton. She, uh, Shelley's like, "Help! I need a ride to the Double R," and he just calls <laughs> the Carl Mobile with a whistle. whistle. And I love it. It's the, it is. It's totally the Carl Mobile. And he gets in there. He's got like a desk and yeah. a phone. And he's like, so, "You're like." He's like, "Call the police commissioner." <laughs> yeah. Is he a Bookhouse member too? If not, or he should be. It feels Maybe. like he is. Uh, it, somebody it said Ca- Carl man. is the future of Uber. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, magic whistle. Okay, Carl is definitely a guardian angel. Well, it's like, funny. It I thought. That way. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to call a dog because when he does it, you hear like the the sound of a dog barking in the in the distance. <laughs> oh, we're going to see Carl's dog, and then like the, yeah, they, they they cut, and then you just see the van pull up. <laughs> Driving the car. Uh, and then of course uh, in that dog. conversation, awesome Becky, who still won't even admit she's being abused, you know, which yeah. definitely feels synchronous with uh, Shelly and Leo's yeah. relationship and that whole sequence being so tragic as Bobby is as we said watching all this play out and realizing it's just history yeah, repeating yeah. itself mm-hmm. um, which is even more interesting with what happens immediately after that as bullets fly into the double R uh, Bobby runs out there dealing with this this kid who apparently found the, his dad's gun in the back seat and fired it out the window. Meanwhile, the woman behind them in the car is just incessantly oh, honking on the horn. I actually yelled at the TV screen, shut the fuck up! Yeah. <laughs> like, nothing so sets my nerves intense. on edge, like like yeah. somebody just incessantly honking. But that moment <laughs> that I didn't put together immediately where Bobby's looking at the kid and then looks over at the dad and sees they're dressed alike, they're even standing yeah. alike, yeah. and the kid has a sort of like weird, distant look in his eyes, and I was like, I, I didn't put it together, but he at that moment is saying, is seeing that, wow, Shelly and Becky, it's just it's history the repeating thing, yeah. itself. Yeah. They're the same person. Well, and it kind of t- it kind of ties back to that whole scene at the end of season two where it's uh, it's in the double R and it's um, it's um, and I just forgot his name. Uh, Shelly and Bobby. Oh, yeah, Bobby. thank you. Yeah, it's Shelly and Bobby, and they're they're both in the diner. It's when he asked her to marry to to marry him, mm. and but all their dialogue in that scene is the exact same as it was in the pilot. So you're kind of seeing these these repetitions in this town right. happening yeah. over and over and over like again. Tw- Twin Peaks itself is stuck in a weird loop. Time yeah, loop. it kind of reminds me of Seattle for me. Yeah, like Seattle. It seems like a big city, mm-hmm. but it's really. It's tiny. It's very insular. And it's like the same, yeah. And Austin, for that matter. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just haven't been here long enough for that looping to happen yet. Um, Soon. <laughs> but if that's the case, and that is definitely a thing, it makes you wonder if Becky has other lovers as well. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. because if she's the new Laura oh, boy, Palmer yeah. in <laughs> some ways, then it makes you think, huh, I wonder if she's got some other action on the side. Yeah. There. I don't know. Well, didn't uh, her husband, when he was berating her on the couch, like ready He said, to I know what's going on or something. I know something what's like going that. on. So I was thinking, does that allude to some kind of weird dealings with, Jacques, was it Jacques or is it his brother at the Roadhouse? Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 Jean-Michael Renault. Thank Jean-Michael. you. Because yeah. yeah, I'm thinking, did she go off and do something to get more drug money or to yeah, I, score drugs? It could be. You yeah. know, yeah. Sparkle apparently is deeply addictive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'd yeah. still try it. Well, and that's, oh. I think... <laughs> I think that I think armpit lady. Yeah. you don't want to it's, do that. It's fine. I, I'm fine. <laughs> scratching my. Arm. I think that kid in the car is probably hopped up on Sparkle as well. Yeah, because we see the kid in the car, like the woman oh, who's wow. driving, says, "Her uncle is joining us. She hasn't seen him in a very long while. We're late. We've got miles to go. We have to go. She's sick." And Bobby's just oh. sitting there like we are watching. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> as the kid is just like that. Both the kid starts kind of leaning towards her. That and Thrown up green bile, and the woman is like, Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and, he, and Bobby just has this look like, The fuck? <laughs> it's funny and horrifying at the, the same the, time. The mom, I'm assuming, if she's seeing her daughter do this, wouldn't she drive her right to ER? I mean, this is like someone on the brink of death almost. It's like, Who's this uncle? I hope he's a doctor at ER. At some point, people point out the kid looks so creepy. Maybe something's up with that. But yeah. like, like maybe he was fire. Something made him fire <clears throat> inside the double R. At that yeah. that's kind of what I wondered. Is is lo- the look on his face? Maybe wonder if like the mom is covering and something else is going on. Yeah, or maybe she just doesn't know. Yeah, you know? Um, and dress exactly like the father too. Yeah. Now, of course, one of the big telling moments here is Hawk. Well, first off, uh, Sheriff Truman 
looking at his computer with the coordinates saying, by my reckoning, this is where we're going, but there's no road. The road's gone. And Hawk's like, well, I do have this thing. <laughs> I have this old tribal map. is an so ancient awesome. map he unrolls looking for Jack Rabbit's palace. He oh points goodness. out that it's in a mountain peak to the right of the two twin peaks that look, that are drawn very similar to the two triangles mm-hmm. that we saw earlier in Major Briggs's note. Uh, it says, but that's where Major Briggs' station is, Blue Pine Mountain, which he describes as a revered sacred site. Uh, and then when he's going through the symbols, uh, when the uh, Sheriff Truman goes, well, what is that? It's, is that fire? He goes, well, it's a type of fire. It's like yeah. modern day electricity. Truman says, is it good? He says, it depends on the intention behind the fire, which felt like one of those moments yeah. that you're like, oh, this is putting other things into a deeper level of perspective. Yeah. And obviously that obsession with electricity that's run Black through fire. Twin yeah. Peaks. Yeah. And then yeah. saying the whole thing where we get to um, the uh, corn we said this is black corn. It represents the opposite of fertility. It, it represents death. And when that combines with fire, it becomes the black fire, which mm-hmm. is fire that causes death. You know, so bad electricity, pre- presumably. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, as we mentioned earlier, when we see the symbol with the crescent half moon turned upside down, and then the the black bug looking thing from uh, mm-hmm. Mr. C's playing card, as Frank, you don't ever want to know about that. Which I don't know about you, <laughs> but at that moment, I'd be like, yes, I do. Yeah, I want to Let's a look. <laughs> the, 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 uh, secrets have not served. Twin Peaks well. Yeah. <laughs> so, <to> come clean. <laughs> he also, des- Hawk describes the map as very old but very current. It's a living thing, which insinuates it literally changes based on new things that are yeah. happening, which is kind of cool. I could use a map. Oh, we do. It's called Google Maps. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, of course, the log lady calling him at that moment mm. when they're looking at it says, my log is afraid of fire. There's fire where you're going, Hawk. There's fire where you're going. Presumably the black fire. Yeah. yeah. Or, uh, so don't. Interesting. He probably should not fire walk with anyone is the message. There. Yeah. It, I, it does. Oh, oh, no, you go for it. It's the, you're getting closer to fire. You're going and then let's rock. And then let's rock makes me think of the electrical pole. Yeah. I don't know. I, I have I have a sneaking suspicion that they're probably going to go to this place within the next episode or two. And it's not going to turn out well for anybody that goes. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm genuinely scared for whoever ends up going We're to this place. We're approaching one of the big episodes. I yeah. think. Oh, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. with everybody converging on this place and shit going down. Well, and I feel like, you know, them talking about how this season is like an 18 hour movie, you know, and you kind of saw it with episode six or seven felt like the end of act one. I feel like we're coming up to, you know, episode 12 and it feels like we're kind of getting near the end of what would be act two of like, yeah. Everybody, all the characters, all plot lines are starting to come together and get yeah. kind of now all in one kind of linear progression move towards the very end. Agreed. Uh, that whole scene ends so weirdly, though, because it's so you're just like, huh. Yeah. Like watching every second of it and paying, <laughs> pouring over their words. And then, je- mm-hmm. like, new young cop Jesse comes to the door. Hey, you want to see my car? <laughs> which is like, which was pointed out to me. That was kind of like, that's what all this is about is getting back to that just innocence of Mm -hmm. like that part of Twin Peaks. Those people are just like, I just want to show you my father figure, this new car I got. I'm proud of it. This sort of vague, uh, naive sweetness of Twin Peaks. It's like, that's what they're literally fighting for is goofy fuckers like Jesse and his new car. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Then of course we get to the, the big scene of this, the big, like, you know, mythology scene with them going to, with Cole and Tammy and Diane and, and Bill Hastings and I forget the detective Mackey, I think Mackley, Mackley yeah, Mack- going to the spot of uh, like the of uh, that the, uh, that Hastings told them about where he saw uh, Major Briggs's head going off and wow. this neatest three person perspective thing that Lynch does here where we see the scene from Cole's point of view. Mm-hmm. We see it from Albert's point of view and we see it from Diane's point of view as Diane just sees as Cole gets closer, him make gesturing in the sky. <laughs> oh, Cole yeah, sees the, the first the woodsman and then the crazy vortex that yeah. some it's weird really spherical weird. thing is coming at him at. Not sure. Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And yeah. then Albert sees everything getting out of focus and Cole starting to disappear before he superheroes in and says, get the yeah. fuck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lose you like we did David Bowie. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, Dave Bowie's character, you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> uh, and then them finding that that headless body of Ruth Davenport kind of pointing into the sky. Yeah, yes. yeah. With more coordinates on her arm, which has been pointed out, are Twin Peaks. Yeah, that ah, that was like the most satisfying moment of this yeah. episode because yeah. I saw those coordinates. Finally, yeah. And there's that whole moment where they ask Gordon, like, what's going on? And he, and he says, he gets cut off, but he basically says, you know, 
Oh, well, their coordinates in the Pacific Northwest. And I literally paused and went, aha! Yeah, right? I knew it! Yeah. Like, yeah. way, it all the way... Sense. It has to when, be the glass. When they realize all the way, everything is all about Twin Peaks. All the way back in, like, episode one, when Mr. C was in that diner telling him about how I'm trying to get these coordinates to get to a certain place. I'm like, it's yes. Twin Peaks, it's going to the Black Lodge. I'm, I'm like, yeah. I swear to God, this is where this I, is all going. I huh. would bet good money that has... It has to be that. Well, and it's it and it's and it's interesting because after Hastings' head explodes and Mackley gets on the <laughs> on the horn with uh, to call backup, he says they're on uh, they're on Sycamore Street. Yes, which I thought, oh, yeah, and it kind of goes back to twenty two forty Sycamore. Yeah, well, and it goes back to in Las Vegas, the street that uh, uh, in the empty house that Cooper came out on Sycamore was uh, yeah, it was also Sycamore. Yeah. And nice. as well, the that entrance to the Black Lodge in the Ghost Forest, the Sycamore Street is, is with surrounded Grove. by a ring of Sycamore Sycamore Street. Well, and, uh, and and then and then Dougie's house is is uh, um, it's all the neighborhood is all Arthurian streets oh, and it's yeah, over yeah, by yeah, like Mer- yeah, King Arthur's Court, Red Merlin's door. Palace, and all that. So it's yeah. All like red doors all yeah, yeah. And a red door, and it's all this weird red stuff that's all starting to kind of come together. Yeah, uh, someone also pointed out yeah. that if you freak to, if you get the the still of the freeze frame, which I we, I pulled one up for us, but it's not the best version of it because it's like kind oh, of yeah. alternately being lit. But there's a stain on the wall that yeah. looks an awful lot like an atomic explosion. <laughs> the, 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 oh, wow. the still of the woodsman. <laughs> Like it yeah. went off over here and it um, it burned into the wall. Yeah, it uh, does. Not clear if that was intentional, but it sure looked like it to me. And the wallpaper in the back looks like the fo- the painting that uh, the old woman is it called? What were their names? Oh, oh uh, the 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 sure. tree the tree months. Thank you. Yeah. The grandmother and the young child handed Laura right before uh, Meals on Wheels, and it had a door and. That wallpaper can be seen in one little speck behind the woodsman. And I was like, good catch. Oh, the kid with the mask. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. the same wallpaper. Hmm. Um, oh, and that lady, when uh, Ruth, when she died in that, like her hand up in the air, if you look at Julie Cruz's uh, floating into the night, it's a similar doll. Well, it's very similar. And hmm. then when he had the Industrial Symphony Number no. 1 live performance, they had a woman... Uh, suspended upside down falling nude during this it's powerful it again falling uh, someone falling through space and time huh a reoccurring like yeah like sounds even like in this season Ruth yeah met the major briggs got sucked up into like a vor- like vortex like falling that same thing yeah presumably Ruth went there with bill hastings yeah, yeah. So since they were having an affair together anyway yeah. and, and she did not survive the encounter and after this mm-hmm. neither did bill who yeah, yeah but they, right, this shit the just blew his b- mind you know yeah, <laughs> he wasn't supposed to yeah went back and he was eliminated as well i, I love mackley calling for backup and diane just going there's, there's no, no backup for this, for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> So uh, and then afterwards, <laughs> them going back to the office, Cole's hand shaking like he describes like a cat on a tin roof. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and a weird moment where uh, uh, Albert says, maybe we should not have coffee. And they just yeah. have coffee. There's just no, <laughs> that, no, we're having coffee. That's, that's, <laughs> and then, of course, as we, once again, as we said earlier, with the, they looking at the coordinates that Albert took a picture of, and you can watch Diane, see Diane mouthing yeah. the coordinates, clearly trying to remember mm-hmm. them. And then Albert giving yeah. her the, like, I see you, bitch. <laughs> what you doing? And then her saying she wants to smoke, and then you know, keep smoking here, and then Mackley says smoke them if you got them the yeah. first time. Someone said that in what thirty years? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so moving on to <laughs> Duper, as I like to call oh. him, Dale Cooper. Uh, he is led into his boss Bushnell Mullen's office by Phil, who seems to be the only person in this universe who is aware of the fact that Dougie is completely incompetent. Like, he's, he's actually figured out a strategy of leading him like a carrot with a horse of coffee, like <laughs> leading him into the office. Just the easiest way to do it. <laughs> uh, uh, to, like, I, it is still kind of funny and frustrating that no one else seems to clue in how deeply impaired this guy is. Mm-hmm. So we're like, seriously? <laughs> no one's like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? No, they're like, oh, I get it. It's, it's like being there. Have you ever seen that movie with yeah, Peter Sellers is. where like he says he's obviously not there altogether yeah. there and people are like, Oh, I see what he's actually doing. 
like pointing out that man, every it's everybody else who's incredibly stupid. That's why I love that moment. Like I think it was back in like episode six or seven where um, Naomi Watts just finally turns to <laughs> turns to Duper and goes, "Dougie, what the fuck?" Yeah. <laughs> she knows something's up, but yeah, yeah, but she's also willing yeah. to sleep with a guy who essentially is an autistic. Like deeply autistic <laughs> child, um, uh, uh, oh, and then even then, uh, uh, so Dougie being praised by his boss, like, "Oh, you're great!" Saying it came, oh. the problem came from a cancer in his office, a conspiracy of gangsters, corrupt cops, and duplicitous insurance agents. Those now, duplicitous insurance agents. Yeah, you know, oh. and but what was weird about that was like, like, because we knew Tom Sizemore's character was duplicitous for yeah. sure, but then so I assumed he was talking about like the gangsters being the Mitchum brothers, but he's like, "No, they're actually they were right. We'll yeah. go give him the check." I was like well wait a minute what is he actually talking I about i think it's then? probably duncan todd is who he's talking about mm, yeah uh-huh. that's tom sizemore's character i uh, know that's um uh mr winky from mr. Uh, yeah, yeah. Duncan todd. and then sizemore's character what's his, what is his name um i'm oh. blanking on it yeah tom sizemore. i suspect yeah, he's not tom. gonna live for more than another episode and, and that's a thing dangerously close because yeah. he doesn't off the doggy no the mitchin brothers are gonna they who don't like him anyway yeah. are going to go okay yeah. now that we love dougie fuck yeah. you and it, and it definitely felt and with this scene him, yeah. that this whole insurance storyline thing is is about to come to a close yeah. that we're, we're nearing the end of this <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and then you know on they're like oh well the mitchin brothers are sending a car for you which you're like we all know they're just gonna kill him we're yeah. like fuck and hoping yeah, that he scary. has the mind to deliver this 30 million dollar check knowing he doesn't right. and we're like like he'd just oh. die having no idea what would have saved him but who saves him ultimately is mike the one our man who <laughs> yeah, sends him a just, vision to go buy a pie at yeah, the downstairs like, mall in a giant box <laughs> yeah. and at first i thought are we having a seven moment what is that yeah it was a there? Yeah. It was full a freaking on. pie it was so polite he brought a pie it was a reverse seven because he basically meets him in the middle of the desert with the yeah. same kind of set it was yeah, almost yeah. the same shot for shot i'm like what the hell's going on like, well, who's to say what's in the box oh my yeah. god yeah. Uh, well it, we all hoped it was gwyneth paltrow's head oh, I thought, <laughs> you know, I, which a lot of people pointed out that final scene seems to n- no question be directly it's like a satire of seven oh yeah it was like ends exactly the opposite of how yeah. seven oh, yeah. does you know you're just it's like, like the bringing but, a pie to it seemed like a very 50s gesture to yeah. new neighbors and Def- everyone loves each definitely other innocence and friendship and yeah. things like that that represent cherry pie you know? yeah and jim belushi american dream yeah. let's talk about what a comedic god jim belushi actually is in this episode because that was so yeah. funny like I did, i've never liked him before at all i was yeah. kind of like whatever but he just brought it <laughs> yeah he was hilarious well, well, and, I, and i love robert nepper in that scene when he pulls the gun he's just like what the fuck is going on yeah. like yeah. what are you talking well, about like the whole yeah. like so presumably mike also sent the dream yeah. to yeah. bradley mitchum to jim belushi yeah. who nice. is the prophetic dream that saves yeah. dale cooper's life when he was like oh i'm if there's a pie in that box then he's not our guy he's, he didn't do it <laughs> they're like uh, and that moment where he gets the check and his knees bend he gets the <laughs> like yeah <laughs> it's a million dollars. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. that's so weird. Um, and which, of course, led up to I think everybody's favorite moment this episode, yeah. which they tease you. You're just waiting yeah. for it. Mm-hmm. And Dougie echoing uh, one of the Mitchum brothers by saying, as he's shoveling the cherry yeah. pie down his mouth, "Damn good." Yeah, yeah. it was snappy. With more like, intonation. Whoa. Then he normally delivers lines. Then Dougie delivers lines. And his more jaw more. isn't slack. Yeah. yeah and it's like he changes yeah. his whole posture for a second. You're like, feeling like it's oh, it, yeah. more it reminded me, it reminded me of that moment in uh, episode four or five when he, when, he, when he calls out Tom Sizemore in that meeting. And for just that split second yeah. becomes old Cooper again and just says he's yeah. lying. Like It reminded me a lot of that moment. Yeah, little yeah. flashes of old Cooper. And this, this definitely is yeah. a thing we all know we've been waiting for. When is he going to have pie? Yeah. We saw him have coffee and go, this is a thing I love. Yeah. I yeah. remember. I remember loving this. Yeah. And now with Pi, Jesus oh, cool. Christ, you're not going to be able to take this guy anywhere. Uh, <laughs> um, and meanwhile, Candy, of course, is standing there still totally bugged out. And then the <laughs> gorgeous a- Angela Badalamente piano number being played yeah. in the background. Although I was kind of like, why didn't you just have Badalamente step in and be the piano player mm. in this no, scene? Isn't that weird? I thought it was an odd yeah. choice to have an actor do it instead of Badalamente himself. I thought that was strange, too. Maybe they... Yeah, I can't figure... Oh. And I like how it, the music was in the uh, Las Vegas lounge piano bar and so it's integrated into the scene more and there was dialogue instead of like okay now it's the road house I liked how it's like okay it makes sense they're in a piano bar they're having pie everyone's cheering and they're talking and then he's he's like this kind of reminds me of something and it kind of reminds me of Laura's theme yeah yeah 
Wait, a little bit. Reminded. It hits that same kind of minor key at the beginning. And this yeah. is one of the only episodes that Bad Lamente actually had music almost all the way through it. Yeah. Like, we, yeah. we've seen only bits so and spurts really... of his score, and this episode is the first <laughs> one where it's it's there a lot. Again, going back to, you know, the show's more and more becoming classic Twin Peaks. Like this, yeah. And this and this, this episode tonally resembled uh, uh, more than any other ones in episode of classic sure. Twin Peaks. Definitely, like, with that great mix of, like, dark moments to funny. Oh, know, yeah. It, yeah. Was, it really hit that really balance. And, it, and this one was very much the, the, the most linear, you know? And mm-hmm. I felt like you've kind of watched, other than, like, the brief trip to Crazy Town in episode eight, you've kind of watched this gradual <laughs> arc of the episodes themselves becoming more linear and more structured as they go along. Wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful Crazy mm-hmm. Town. <laughs> if it's David Lynch's Crazy Town, I'll visit any time. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then, this, you know, if the, as if this sequence couldn't be any more charming with Dougie, like, them trying to toast, he keeps grabbing for their glass. Like, no, 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 it's your glass. And, like, they're just loving him so much. They're like, God, don't you feel like, like, it's like, Bill Blassie, I love that guy. The old Saturday Night Live, you know, you're like, it's Dougie Jones. Yeah. Don't you love that guy? The old woman coming up that we oh, saw yeah. in the original that Mr. Jackpots so episode wonderful. who's now like you know wealthy and like yeah. she reconnected with her son and she's like thank you thank you Mr. you're a saint which is only like three yeah. days later yeah. so <laughs> yeah it seems like oh wow so much has changed for her. but she was kind of like a I don't think she was homeless, but she kind of looked, she looked disheveled. And, yeah, she looked sad. Yeah. And then when she said, I hope you know what a special person you're having dinner with. Or did she say special or divine? Or yeah. Yeah. Something like that. But it was like, yeah. Man, I would kill or die, though, for a close-up of that map. All we've got is a couple yeah. flashes, and we see a long Definitely. shot, but not. Those it's coordinates. just so you can't really make out details very yeah. well. I'm like, somebody on set had to have taken a picture of this fucking thing. I can't imagine they did. Yeah, I looked everywhere. <laughs> no, he, he probably had no cameras. Did you hear the great story about Jim Belushi oh, improvising? Uh, no. <laughs> so, during that scene, Jim Belushi apparently decided to ad-lib a line, and then David Lynch stopped, grabbed a mag of and says, Mr. Belushi, will you please come to the principal's office? (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty funny. Well, um, that's all I have written down for this stuff of notes that I took. And if you guys have anything else you want to add to these three episodes or what you predict is coming, then this is the time. So one of the things I've been thinking about a lot with Dougie, and I'm I'm strictly in the Dougie camp, and I love Dougie. I'd be fine with it being Dougie till the end of time because I think (laughs) Dougie's, we are Dougie, hashtag. Yeah. Um, (laughs) <clears throat> kind of like we're talking about like him being kind of the being there character, the Chans- Chansey Gardner, that sort of thing. In a way, it's kind of like a play. And it, it, a lot of the show is a joke. It's about it's a meta play on the show itself, about TV, about modern culture, sure. It's also, to me, like a joke on what Agent Cooper was in the original series. He was this amazing detective, and now he's just kind of slifing through, and he's still this amazing yeah. detective. Yeah. He does yeah. nothing, and he's still better than anybody else. I think it's kind <laughs> of a joke on that. How long that goes and people will tolerate it is one thing. Yeah. But I think it's a really funny, just like he's still, even just with his look or glances, he's still that amazing person deep inside. Yeah. And I do stand by the theory that they're going to merge because I think that makes the most sense at this point. They're going to become, because they both represent something of each and they're going to kind of come together and be one coop. I agree. Yeah, I feel like this episode, uh, episode 11, definitely started to kind of sow the seeds for uh, the direction that we're kind of going as we start to approach the end game of all this. Mm -hmm. You know, you're starting to see all of these, you know, seemingly disparate storylines you know, come together. I mean, we, we've been seeing in South Dakota everything kind of come to a head there. But in Vegas, everything started to come to a head. And then now with the reveal of the coordinates, you know, and all that, it's it's becoming very, very clear that, that very, very soon we're going to have a lot of these other characters who haven't been in Twin Peaks this season all be going back there and that this is where this is all, all going to end. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's exciting, you know, and also kind of terrifying at the same time, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and also has that sort of like, no, I don't want it to end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, don't but it has to moment. though. Mm-hmm. But it, and that's oh, and that's the thing is, it's episode by episode, it's it's gaining more and more momentum. Yeah, and you yeah. can just kind of feel that. And, and this does very much feel like probably the next episode is going to be our like end of Act Two. It feels as like as, that, as, yeah. as it were, and something probably really monumental's going to happen. I'm expecting the next, the next one to be big. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'd be another three or eight again. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I'm curious about that black fire. And since I'm from Washington, the first thing I thought of was like Mount St. Helens or Mount Rainier blowing. Mm-hmm. Or some old ancient. But it's not well, electricity. Well, it you might be onto something. You might be onto something because in, in the book, they, they talk about how um, the, the Twin Peaks were both, back in the day, they used to be active volcanoes. 
Um, and and then mm-hmm. they they became dormant. They they lay dormant for thousands of years. So maybe maybe you're you're getting onto something because because it could just they could just be all or as I like to call reunion. them mountain fountains. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> big reunion at the R and R diner, and if Mount Rainier wants to go, it could just. Game yeah. over for everybody. Yeah. It's not just solved. That would be it's interesting. If, yeah. like, it, it, the climactic is like <laughs> let to one of the peaks turning into an active volcano oh, yeah. and destroying Twin fair. Peaks. It would be very end of lost. Is, is yeah. everyone's thinking, you know, if Mount Rainier goes, game over. It yeah. doesn't matter anymore, you know, how much your rent mm. is and your traffic jam if that fucker goes. Yeah. Because Mount St. Helens was pretty... Dramatic. I lived in As Virginia, is. and we had ash falling in Virginia yeah, from the Mount St. Helens when that blew. I remember we were having a crab feast outside, oh, which is something wow. we do in Virginia, <laughs> and, and on picnic tables and hammers and all that. And uh, <laughs> and then it's, I was like, what the fuck? And it was yeah. like just black ash falling yeah, out of the sky. It was we were like, really Jesus. weird. I thought it was the end of the world. They've said that if uh, Yellowstone goes, oh, yeah. that could very well One cause the equivalent of a nuclear winter. Could trigger yeah. the it's, other. Yeah, and then it's game well, the, over. The Yellowstone is essentially a super volcano. Yeah, you know, yeah. M- like I think they said something like five hundred times bigger than Mount St. Helens if it blew, which would be like, yeah, yeah, we'd be kind serious. of fucked. And there's literally nothing we can do about that. Like, oh no, where are the James Bond villains who like don't want to everyone to die? Yeah. You know, who are like all those guys always like I've controlled the harness, the power of geothermal magnetism to cause the San Andreas fault yeah. to break. It's like, or you could just fix Yellowstone so we don't all die. Yeah, it's- <laughs> somebody call. <laughs> Blofeld and appeal to his better side. You like kitties. You can't be all bad. <laughs> Just it's, saying. It's a <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah, because it's, and then another, like I read through different theories and I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. And someone said, what if uh, Laura didn't die and it was her doppelganger that got murdered by a father that she's sitting in a lodge safe man that know. would that would be such a huge i, I don't know that would be you such a out. huge cop out and a really? retcon like i mean that. she is getting pretty dark towards the end but at the same time yeah. like people who you think would know that she was a doppelganger were trying to protect her and, and that would just sort of invalidate fire walk with me just as a movie in a weird yeah. way like it would just sort of like take away all the dramatic weight that that movie has. Because the whole point of her wearing the ring was to not go to the lodge and yeah. to not be taken over. It was yeah. that the only thing she could do was be killed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and, yeah. and that's and again, that's kind of the interesting thing um, with you know that whole line about Laura being the one that, again, somehow in some way that, that that this is all going back to where it started, you know, and and sooner rather than later. So you think that little bug creature, you know, that we keep seeing on the yeah. playing card, yeah. the map, could be the bug creature that we saw climb inside the mouth in episode eight? Oh, I'd be representative of that. I definitely. Yeah. Well, I think it might be that. That's interesting. There's also a whole thing in the book where they talk about giant flying owls. Right. <laughs> and so yeah. part of me, like seeing that, part of me is like, it does look like an owl. Yeah, I'm wondering. I'm like, are you guys going to go there and have like a huge <laughs> fucking lost owl flying, you know, in the sky? <laughs> I suppose it's as possible as yeah, anything. Yeah, it could happen, it's honestly. It. It's funny we're this far into <laughs> it and still, like, every theory we have, how this is going to wrap up, are all yeah. pure speculation. Yeah. Oh, There's yeah. so, we're not even close to enough to go on to feel like we know where this is all going, yeah. for sure. And that's one of the things that makes the show as great as it is. Yes, it's abstract and bizarre, but you can follow it, and nothing is so abstract that you're like, okay, now I have no idea what's going yeah, on yeah. at all, but yet... It's just abstract enough to keep you off your toe, uh, on your toes and, and, and off your footing. So you're like, we are. What the fuck is going to happen? Yeah. I, everything is a surprise. And I said this before, and how awesome is it? We're now getting to episode 12. Yeah. Not a single spoiler. Oh, no, yeah. it's tight. Not one. Oh, you, you I've, seen, one? I've seen one thing that I'll tell you about offline. Okay. Yeah, don't no. But otherwise, it, it's, it's not really a, it's not a spoiler. It just kind of is so, an interesting it, thing. It's so tight. It's so, it's so tight. It's so controlled. That's an end of day and age. Really impressive. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I love it. Uh, uh, talking to the guy we did the interview with, he was like, honestly, nobody wants to spoil anything on that set. Yeah. yeah. They all love That's this. So they all love David Lynch. Yeah. Like, he's apparently just about as sweet a guy as you could imagine. He's not at all like you would think a guy who makes movies like David Lynch is like. You'd think he'd be very cold and very standoffish and yeah. very like, like oh, almost a guy who doesn't even, refuses to speak to people but tells oh, his no, assistant no. what to say. He's very like, kind of crazy. 50s, like, hey, he's, he's a boy He's scout. 50s dad. Yeah, yeah he's 50s you know? dad. Cause when he's J.R. Bob Dobbs. I met him a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> I met him a couple times. He came to Cornish and, and spoke to an audience of only 10 people. This mm-hmm. was like right after like 
Blue Velvet right before Twin Peaks started. Yeah. Um, and he's very, very, yeah, Bob Dubs. He's <laughs> very 50s guy, and he's very uh, polite. Like, it reminds me of my parents. Very 50s, very polite morals, very Boy Scout. And it's, and I was impressed. I was like, this guy's cool. Yeah, everybody you know, seems to so love cool. him who works with him. Yeah. 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 You know, everybody constantly comes back, so you're like, wow, he must be one of the great, yeah. you know, like, uh, and, and, you know, the guy I talked to was like, he literally was like, showed him everything he wanted him to do with nice. his arms and legs. Oh, it was like, cool. here's what I, you're moving like this. Like, he put his arms around him and it was like moving his arms and legs. And it was like, wow, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I would greet it's him in the vision. hallway when he saw him by name and stuff nice. afterwards. You're like, oh, that's so sweet. And I also like to think this is going to be it because I don't think you could do this again because one, so many people have died. Yeah. And two, it's such a singular thing that, you know, we weren't expecting it. I think he is the kind of person who wouldn't want to do that again. He's like, we did this. He has a very, he apparently has a very clear vision. And I, I can I can feel it wrapping up. I have no idea how, but I can see it wrapping up in six episodes, seven episodes. Sure, why Yeah, not? well, and, and Mark Frost has kind of basically alluded that this is probably going to be it. If but no, he also said, but maybe not. Well, that's the, well, that's the thing. <laughs> is like, a movie finale. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Is he, 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 he's doing the book um, after this. It's going to be kind of like the, the, oh, the yeah. right. wrap-up the, the, book. Yeah. Like um, final dossier. Okay. But everything I've kind of been hearing kind of leads me to believe, if for no other reason than the fact that they've spent like five years just making this season, yeah. that they're not ruling out the possibility of doing more after this, yeah. but they're just kind of for now assuming this is probably going to be it. I mean, I would love if they were just like, this wraps up what was happening in Twin Peaks, yeah. but there are other Blue Rose things. Oh, that would be so great. There are other things people. that go so on that, that are cool. bizarre and yeah. multidimensional. There are other other dangers out there, yeah. Yeah. you know, and deal with those. But that's, I'm the guy who just wants this world to never so do you, end. Do you, you know? think it's going to have a nice 50s ending, kind of like Blue Velvet and Wild at Heart? Like, it's still dark and bittersweet, but they did give them two... Happy ending. If Coop yeah. is Maybe. fully recovered and then is wearing a snakeskin get jacket and starts singing, <laughs> I will be so happy. <laughs> I, think, I think I don't know. I, I think I don't know. I'm, I'm very back and forth on that. I mean, part of me thinks part of me is leaning towards the that it might end like that in a very yeah. idealized fashion because um, again, going back to stuff that Mark Frost is talking about from like way early on when they announced this, yeah. you know, he said that like their you know their big thing, uh, their big intention with this is making sure that they got. That audience has got like a very satisfying conclusion with this, yep, that so be. that's possible. But again, at this point, yeah. I, I don't know. Any, anything, anything is on the is table. Possible. Yeah, absolutely anything. Okay, so, anybody have any last stuff before, <laughs> before we finish up? No. All right, so we will be back in. Uh, presuming schedules don't go crazy again in another two weeks for episodes twelve and thirteen, which I yeah. suspect will be a lot of oh my god yeah. moments <laughs> in it as we're 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 careening towards uh, the the big conclusion with episode eighteen. Presuming they don't announce it, episode seventeen. By the way, we're actually it's actually twenty five episodes. <laughs> Be Which like, would be, cool. I'd be like, hooray! Yay! Yay! So it's like we're addicted, like sparkle. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> uh, Twin Peaks is our sparkle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they know about sparkle motion? Oh, I doubt your commitment. <laughs> yeah. 